Hi, I'm Carlton, and today I'm going to tell you how to fix the very common failure of a broken air pressure regulator knob on the Husky 41004 Air Scout air compressor. Here it goes. These Husky Air Scout air compressors have almost a 100% failure rate of this air pressure regulator knob, and it's because it uses cheap metal, there's a lot of pressure behind it, and it eventually just pushes the metal out and causes it to break. This is actually the second air compressor I have. The first one broke and I returned it, but this one now it's well outside of the warranty. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it myself. It's actually a pretty easy fix if you have the right tools and I'm gonna show you how to do it. What you're gonna notice is this knob will be very loose. You won't be able to screw it in or out. So the first thing to do is to get, basically to get it out of the way. Um, and it's really, it's, uh, it's not going to be threaded in. The threads are gonna be busted but the shaft of that knob is going to be held in place by this snap ring. So what you're gonna to need to do is just pull on this as much as you can, pull back and forth, maybe use some pliers and get this knob off and out of the way. And then when that's out, you'll see that uh, where, where the metal has been, uh, the threads came loose. And you'll see this uh, lock ring here. So remove the lock ring and the next step will be to move the entire valve, valve assembly. It takes a, I believe, a one and 13 sixteenths socket. Um, the one I had was a one and a quarter inch socket, but it works fine. Put it on and it, there's some, it's a little loose, but uh, I didn't even have to put a socket on this. I was just able to turn it and the pressure regulator comes out. And now this is the part that we're going to fix. Here you can see the snap ring installed on the shaft on the end of this knob. When you're pulling the knob out, what you're actually doing is pulling it out of, you're pulling the threads out of uh, that snap ring. Take a screwdriver, put it inside the shaft hole and gently push out. And you will see that this diaphragm assembly will start to come out. The way we're going to fix this pressure regulator valve body is by retapping the threads using a 3 8 inch diameter by 16 thread per inch tap. Gonna get it started and I'll do the rest off camera. You can see just turning it, cutting the threads. I actually never had a thread tap set before a few weeks ago. I happened to buy it for another project, now I'm using it for this. I'll have a link in the description in case you need to buy one. The most important thing is to make sure that you're absolutely perpendicular and that the threads are not going to cross thread and they go straight in. I think I did an okay job here, it's pretty soft metal, but uh, it should be enough to keep the threads for the new bolt in. Here you can see the new threads I tapped. Not perfect, but it should be good enough to work with this simple repair. Here's an old 3 8 by 16 thread per inch bolt I had. This is gonna be the new pressure regulator cap assembly. Be sure you thoroughly clean out all the metal shavings once you've retapped the threads. The next step is to reassemble the pressure regulator. You can see there are the O-rings, here's the spring, and then this cap and the indentation goes downwards. And it just presses into this valve body. Now we're going to install this back into the compressor. And tighten it with this slightly oversized socket. And the O-rings provide all the sealing, so really hand tight is all you need. If I had some silicone uh, O-ring lube, I would have put that on, but I don't have any silicone O-ring lube, so it's going back in the way it came out. Final step is to install the replacement knob. And to be honest, this bolt is way too long, but it's the one I have. I'll probably order a shorter one so that it doesn't stick out quite so much. Now it's time to give it a test. Time for the moment of truth. Let's see what happens. I'm going to 
we call that a success. The max pressure is 135 and didn't quite make it there, made it at 130, but to be honest, I think that's where it was before. So I'm gonna call this a successful solution. The only thing to worry about is if that bolt were to come out and if there were some high pressure air, uh, there is no retaining washer or lock ring on the backside of it. All right, I did another three minutes of backyard engineering. Some stainless steel safety wire around the bolt goes to this. So if it does pop off, it won't go very far. There you go, repair complete. I'll call it a success. I would recommend putting some anti-seize on the threads of the bolt that goes in. It may prevent corrosion on those threads in the future, which may prevent the failure from happening again. Uh, it certainly won't hurt anything. You may want to put some, uh, some Teflon tape on there as well, just to make sure it has a good seal. I will uh, want to point out that there is another way to do this repair, is to completely disassemble the, uh, the, the uh, compressor and to replace the entire valve assembly. The valve assembly is not that expensive if you can find it. It's only about $20, but it's at least an hour, if not more, of labor trying to get this thing all apart and replace those parts and put it back together. And this, had I not been recording a video, would have been less than a 10 minute repair. So if you have all the tools and if you can do it, uh, this is a quick and easy way to fix this pretty pathetic design uh, that everyone's probably going to experience the failure at some point. Anyway, I hope this helps. See ya.